Baymax, and today I'm replacing Ramzilla to talk about Star Wars The Force Awakens. So, anyways, um, I'm a little late on the Star Wars The Force Awakens review. I saw it on the 17th at midnight, and I saw a lot of YouTubers and stuff posting a spoiler-free reviews, and then a spoiler review, and I was like, that's such a waste of fucking time. It's just a waste to talk about a movie 20 minutes without spoiling anything, and then make another 20-minute video spoiling everything, so it's just... So I figured I'd rather wait, uh, two weeks... For everybody to watch it, and get settled with your emotions and whatnot, see if it's good or not, and I can just do one review. So I thought that was a lot easier. So, anyways, Star Wars: The Force Awakens. When the first little trailer came out, and at the end, it was just like the Millennium Falcon just getting shot at. so excited and then the second trailer came out and I was like holy shit uh, Han Solo when he's like Chewie we're home the feels like I and every time I would go to a movie and they would show this trailer I would start crying because of all the emotions so anyways um, on YouTube there are a there was a lot of TV spots there was a lot of the new trailers and this and that I, I kept myself from watching it. Like, this is honestly one of the hardest things I've had to do because I was like, okay, I want to see this movie. I want to just, I want to I wanna be surprised. I don't want to be like, oh, I already saw that in the trailer. Oh, I saw it in the trailer. Just, I want to be surprised as much as possible. So it was so hard for me. Like, the last three months were so hard for me not to click on those. So, um... My movie going experience was pretty good. Uh, I met Darth Vader. I'll put a photo of that right now. Uh, I held a BB-8, which I have here. Here is my awesome BB-8. Um, he's a thermo, so you can fill him up and drink out of him. So it's really cool. Uh, I love this BB-8. I haven't stopped drinking out of him, so there's that. <laughs> No pun intended. So anyways, the movie, oh my god, so it was supposed to start at midnight and they took 30 minutes to start the movie. But here in Mexico, you get like a lot of these government trailers and then the movie starts. So that was, that was interesting. So 30 minutes for the movie to start and when the movie started, like people started clapping. It was amazing. When you see Star Wars Episode 7, The Force Awakens and you read that description, oh my god, it was so amazing. BB-8 was like... So anyways, I loved this movie. I cried so many times. So much nostalgia was felt. All the feels. Oh man, BB-8 was amazing in this movie. Oh god. And the first time you see the Millennium Falcon, like you get this rush of emotions. I started clapping. I started crying. When it's just like when Rey is just piloting the shit out of it. When, oh no. Han Solo comes out, and he's like, Chewie, we're home. Okay, so I'm starting to tear up because all these emotions, just like remembering when I saw them, I... And then when when Leia shows up, and you just see her, that was so cute. So yeah, um, I can't help it because I'm so happy, and this movie, it was hyped, and I love the original Star Wars movies. Episode 1, 2, or 3 were just kind of like, eh. But the originals and then the original cast coming back, it was amazing. I, I loved it. So yeah, <laughs> can't believe I'm crying in this review. So the movie was perfect for me. I mean, it does have its flaws. So um, for example, Kylo Ren, he's not what I expected him to be. He's He was kind of like a whiny little bitch because... 
he just seemed to his motive was wanting to continue what Darth Vader started. That was his motive, but he didn't really have a trainer. So his supposed trainer, I think um I've heard his name Smorg or Smorg um that guy, a hologram guy. This is just my theory. I could be completely off and whatnot. And yes, I all, we all know Darth Vader died. But I think that might just possibly have been Darth Vader. Now hear me out on this. Because he's training for the dark side, but there's no other Jedis or Sith, Lord, Sith Lords out there. Luke is the only Jedi alive, and he's who the fuck knows where. So, this uh, other guy, if he's his trainer or whatever, mentor, he has to know the Force. So, I, I know we all saw Darth Vader die and shit, but I still think that's Darth Vader simply because of the fact that there was only one Jedi, which is Luke, and I'm going to this guy, which his training isn't even complete, but still. So, there's no other explanation for that. Um... Also, I really enjoyed that Han Solo came back, and I loved it. But I uh, kind of I didn't like the fact that they killed him off, especially by his own son. I did not see that one coming. Um, I saw like I can see why they did it. I'm guessing Harrison Ford. You know, he's old. I mean, he hurt his leg during the filming of this movie. He crashed an airplane, so. At this time, at his age, I'm guessing he's just like, okay, well, I'll come back, but, you know, this is going to be the last time I'll come back. So, I'm guessing that's why they killed him, so that's still pretty cool. You know, I really enjoy that he came back. Now, Leia, she's such a sweetheart, like, I don't know. I, I, I had so much emotion when she came out, and then at the end, when Luke came out, I was like, there's Luke? <laughs> so... I stayed after the movie ended, me and my mom, we stayed, and there was no after credit scene. I think that was one of the biggest disappointments, that there was no after credit scene. Like, really? Not even a little glimpse at episode 8? That's horrible. So yeah, I was a little disappointed in that. Um, oh my god, Poe. Poe, he was so cool. One of my favorite scenes, like this is one scene that I remember so vividly, was when... They're on the planet, uh, I forgot what that planet was called, but where Rey finds Luke's lightsaber, and then um, Kylo Ren comes and attacks, and then, uh, you know, there's this fight, and then you see the X-Wings just go, and then you see Poe, like, just go ham on, just like, it's just like all one continuous shot of him going, doing all the, that was amazing, oh man. Also, I saw it in 3D, and I will admit the 3D was fucking amazing. Like, when you have um, those really big ships, I forgot what they're called, but they're, they come out at you. When Kylo Ren stopped the bullet, that, that comes out at you. Uh, the 3D was amazing in this movie. Um, Rey, she was, she was really, really cool. I, I loved it. Um, especially when... <laughs> When she's tied up and she goes to the stormtrooper and she's like, you will untie me. And then he's like, no, I will, I will tighten those things harder. And then she's like, you will untie me and leave the door open. And he's like, I will untie you and leave the door open. <laughs> and then when he's walking away, she's like, and drop your weapon. And drop my weapon. That was pure genius, honestly. J.J. Abrams did a fantastic job with this movie. Oh, man, um, I'm so glad J.J. Abrams was the director and writer of this movie because I don't see anybody else. And the sad part is that he's not coming back for episode 8 or 9 because they already have the director set up. But um, I wish J.J. Abrams would continue with this because he, he is such an amazing director. I love Star Trek, Star Trek Into Darkness. And he definitely did such an amazing job with episode 7. So I wish he would come back, but he's not, unfortunately. Also, um... What else was I going to talk about in this review? And I've been blabbing away. Just lost my train of thought. So, Luke isn't in this movie. Well, he is, but just like the last two, three minutes of the movie. Um, he's just kind of like away, and the whole movie revolves around looking from 
Um, what I was gonna bring up was, I saw the originals before I went to go see The Force Awakens, and Episode Seven is basically a remake of Episode Four, A New Hope. It literally is the same thing. The only difference is that instead of Luke being the you know the untrained Jedi this time, it's Rey. Um, instead of you know. Obi Wan Kenobi being you know who knows where this time it's Luke, so this movie has a lot of references to A New Hope. This movie is basically a remake of A New Hope, and I'm fine with that because it brings new things to the table as well. It expands the universe. It's just amazing overall. I also really like that the original uh, midget, the little person for R two D two came back, even though R two D two is just like in the last couple minutes. I mean he's there, but he doesn't really do anything until the end. Also, the original actor for Steve Spielberg, that was very cool. And again, I'm in love with BB-8 because he's just so cool. And as far as the characters go, I think, like, I already went over Rey. She was very cool. Finn. Finn was... Finn is was an amazing act. He's an amazing actor because from the beginning of the movie, when shit hits the fan... You can tell, even though he's just wearing a helmet, he's not comfortable with what the dark side is doing. He can feel, like, you know, he doesn't feel right being as a, as a stormtrooper, I guess you could say. So, you can feel it. Even though he's wearing a helmet, you can already feel that he doesn't feel comfortable there. So, that was very, very cool. That was very good, very good emotions there. And when he takes it off, he's just panicking and he's like, what the fuck? So when he helps Poe escape and he meets with Rey, it's just kind of like, oh shit. And I honestly thought that Finn was going to be a new Jedi, but no, it's Rey. And that was very cool to see just Rey just go ham. When she's fighting Kylo Ren and she puts her hand out and Luke's lightsaber comes to her, that was fucking amazing. Oh, man. So, yeah. Um... The effects were cool. Another thing that sold this movie were the practical effects. So, you know, the robots are there. The creatures are there. The ships are really there. I mean, you can tell the Millennium Falcon is there. Um, there's a scene at the end when they're flying off to go find Luke. You can tell that, like, you know, the X-Wing is there. So those, those are very cool. You know, the budget that this movie had, you know, this is what made the movie great. They didn't just go with CGI. Things are really there. So that was very cool to see. Also, um, what I liked was that the trailer for the movies didn't give too much away. So, going into this movie, I did not know that this movie was going to be about a search for Luke. That he disappeared and ended up who knows where. So, I did not know that this was what this... Uh, I did not know that this was what the movie was going to be about. But it's about uh, looking for Luke. Because, you know, he... I think he trained Kylo Ren a little bit, at least that's what I understood from the movie. And then Kylo Ren ended up on the dark side, and that's why Leia wanted, you know, Luke to train Kylo Ren to keep him from the dark side. But throughout the movie, uh, you can tell that Kylo Ren has a hard time focusing on the dark side. Like, you can tell there's some light to him, but he's denying it and he's focusing more on the dark side. So there's that. So, anyways, I love this movie. Chewbacca was really cool, too. Oh, my God. When you see Chewbacca for the first time, and he's like... Oh, so many emotions. But, yeah. Um, I'm really curious to see how you guys felt about The Force Awakens. Um, I hope you guys loved it and enjoyed it as much as I did. And I'm really looking forward to Episode 8 and 9. And, um, I don't know how I feel about the spin-off movies yet. I just, I'm just hoping that this isn't one of those franchises that dies off, like, because we got so much of it that people just feel oversaturated. So I hope that doesn't happen. But, yeah, I'm really looking forward to the next chapter in the Star Wars trilogy. And, anyways, this is my review on Star Wars The Force Awakens. Subscribe to my channel for more reviews, anime music videos, and all that fun stuff. Thank you for watching, and once again, this is Ramzilla signing off.